get to be so sorry about that. Um, and I just wanted to let you know there are a few things that are coming up for us. So we will be next weekend at Piante Pizza in Denver for a holiday fundraiser together with Hawk Haven Farm, which is uh, not a farm sanctuary that rescues um, pigs. And we have a little holiday fundraisers. You can buy some gifts there um, from either us or Hulk Haven. And we're also at the holiday um, vegan pop-up market in December 4th um, at the Avalon uh, Ballroom um, in Boulder. So that's coming up. And currently we're prepping all for things, not Thanksgiving while well, we do that too, but for Giving Tuesday, we have a campaign running that um, hopefully will help our animals um, in regards of making sure that we have the funding for their medical care. This year has been extremely difficult in these regards. So our budget literally doubled um, from what we anticipated for medical care um, because we had a lot of emergency and a lot of animals that are aging and have been gotten sick with cancer. But with the funding, we'll, we will be able to provide the necessary care to have them still striving. We have like some chickens that were diagnosed months ago with cancer and they're doing fantastic from what I can tell. You know, we just manage them. We watch them very closely and they do their chicken things and they're really happy and, and running around and we're just going to provide extra heat and pain medication when needed and, you know, some support. And that is all possible with funding that comes through the medical funding and through my, uh, funding through you. With that, I'm going to hand over to Sarah, who's a vegan chef and health coach. Um, she was so gracious and has been running tremendous classes for us. They're always fun and nutritious and I'm kind of will really regret that I haven't had lunch yet because I will be sitting there drooling over what she's gonna whip up today. So let's just enjoy it and learn a lot. Let me know if you guys still need the pamphlet with the recipes. I sent them over to some of you, I think a couple of days ago and the last one yesterday, but I'll try to get it onto um, the chat as well right now once I hand over to Sarah. So enjoy the class. Thank you for joining. And Sarah, thank you so much for, again, donating your time and your talent and prepping all this wonderful food for us. I'm going to mute and I'm going to take my video off so um, that I'm not disturbing anybody. Um, if you guys, just some housekeeping, if you have questions, I'm monitoring the chat. So I'll address that with Sarah through the chat. And please um, just mute yourself. Um, so that the focus stays on Sarah. All righty, so I'm gonna not hop off, mute and hand over. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Nicole, for giving us an introduction to the Good Life Refuge. And I love the Good Life Refuge. I've been up there several times in Longmont and I highly recommend um, stopping in when uh, Nicole has events and um, seeing all the wonderful animals. They take such wonderful care and they have lovely volunteers and it's just a really lovely organization. So I can't say enough great things about them. I just love the animals up there too. They're so sweet and it's such a nice place. And I'm always so uh, thrilled to be able to help the animals out there through front fundraising events and teaching these um, cooking demos. So thank you all for joining us. My name is Sarah Easton. I think probably most of you all know who I am, um, but as Nicole mentioned, I am a health coach and a, a plant-based chef in the Denver area, and I do all sorts of things. Um, during the pandemic, I've transitioned to a lot of virtual cooking demos, which has gone really well. And then as Nicole mentioned, um, I'm hosting a pop-up pop vegan market December 4th in Boulder, we, we have a lot of wonderful vendors that will be there and it's always a fun time, some food trucks as well. So the reason there were several reasons that I wanted to do a ho holiday cooking demo. And I think the number one reason I wanted to do it was obviously for the animals, but I have been vegetarian um, for 12, uh, since I was 12, for quite a few years. And it's real, and I'm an animal lover. I've been an animal lover since I was very young and it's always been really hard for me. The holidays are really hard because it's, it can be a really tough time to see so many animals 
eaten and neglected and treated poorly. Um, I'm not going to get too far into that. We're going to focus on the food and the, the good things, but um, it's really, I'm going to share a couple strategies that I've learned over the years and a couple great recipes too that will help you um, stay optimistic during the holidays and just deal with some of the stresses of the holidays a little bit better. Um, so I, uh, the first thing that I would like to um, encourage everyone to do is to, if you by chance have a fa families that aren't always supportive of your dining habits or friends that might not, not always um, be on board with the, the uh, plant-based stuff, maybe encourage them to at least have a few side dishes for you or maybe even do a, a total, total plant-based um, uh, Thanksgiving. I did that the first time I went vegan and um, my mom was so supportive and we had a really, really fun time experimenting with the different products and experimenting with just different recipes and things like that. So, um, and then the other thing I, uh, as I mentioned previously, just try to remain optimistic. A lot of people I've, I've found a lot of people just won't, don't want to have anything to do with people that eat meat, don't want to be anywhere near, um, near Thanksgiving with a turkey. I, I can't do that. I have a lot of people in my life that um, eat meat and they're never going to stop eating meat. So I uh, want to spend some time with them. And so I just try to, um, I, you just have to learn to let things go. You just have to learn to um, keep a positive attitude and lead by example. Um, especially if you're trying to eat healthfully and try to encourage your loved ones and uh, your friends and family to maybe try to eat a, a little bit more of a plant-based diet. Remain optimistic and like I said, lead by example and just eat healthy stuff and hopefully they'll come on board. A lot of people that I have um, dined with over the years have really, um, we've planted little seeds and I'm sure a lot of you have done the same thing. So um, yeah, and like I said, sometimes you just have to let things go. I know since uh, the pandemic started, a lot of us haven't been gathering with our loved ones. So it's really important that we gather this year now that we can. So um, yeah, just try to have fun with your friends and family. And if they're eating meat, just try to ignore it and try to focus on having fun. Um, and so, as I mentioned, I've been vegetarian for quite a few years and I have tried all sorts of recipes. And I just wanted to share some of the recipes that I have found to be my favorites. Um, I have tried a lot of like the, the uh, packaged turkeys and those are fantastic. Like tofurkey, celebration roast, um, I was in the store last night at Sprouts and I saw that there are, is like a vegan ham. I haven't tried that, but you know, those are fantastic. Those are perfectly uh, delicious for people. And um, I really encourage anyone to try any of those. I have just found that some of the recipes I'm gonna share and then some of the recipes I'm gonna demonstrate are some of my favorites. I, I really like, um, I've really gravitated to like a, a tofu. I'm gonna show you a tofu cutlet. So I really like those as my uh, protein. So some of the other, uh, some of the other dishes that I really like are like a whole roasted cabbage, or you can also ro uh, roast a cauliflower whole as well and put like some potatoes and some uh, carrots and celery in the bowl and top it with a really nice marinade or a sauce and roast it whole and that turns into you know somewhat of a replacement for turkey and then you can slice it as well. Um, another thing that I made a few years ago was a portobello roast and it was like a uh, pot roast where I subbed out the beef with a portobello mushroom. And it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, maybe next year when I do one of these demos, I will um, do a portobello roast because it was one of the, the best things I've ever eaten. It was so good. Uh, the next thing I really like are, are, are cauliflower steaks. You can um, cut cauliflower into strip or into slices and then you can pan fry it and then bake it in the oven and add all sorts of spices and then top it with a nice like mushroom gravy and it is fantastic. Um, and then there are a couple really nice lentil and bean loaves out there as well. And when you make a, a lentil or bean loaf, you just mush up all of the beans and the lentils and add like a lot of really nice spices and um, other types of sauces and it, you can make a really delicious, a really delicious whole food plant-based, um, whole food plant-based entree. And then some of my other favorite things include just a really, really simple um, meal of tamales and tortilla soup. 
And then also enchiladas are a nice kind of out of the ordinary. Um, Thanksgiving dinner does not have to be new, uh, traditional. So um, think outside the box and um, do some Mexican food or even we have included in this handout, we have included a, a Nicole's recipe for lasagna. And I absolutely love lasagna, especially for Christmas. Um, just serve it with a nice salad and some garlic bread. And it is a fantastic um, comforting way to gather with your family. So um, now we're gonna move on to some of the recipes. I have quite a few dishes that I want to cover. So uh, we're going to get start working on these. Um, you all should have the handout and this has all of the recipes. These are some of my favorite recipes and I encourage you to try all of these. They are all delicious. And um, I'm not gonna make all of these recipes but I did just include some that I think you guys might really like. We're gonna cover the uh, vegan cheese ball. And then we're also going to cover the walnut crusted tofu, which is a, a recipe by Mark Reinfeld, who is a local plant-based chef. And then I'm gonna um, cover the uh, gravy. We're also gonna do the gluten-free stuffing, the raw cranberry sauce, and we're gonna finish it off with these pumpkin pie parfaits. So let's get started. And the first thing that I want to um, I, I want to begin with talking about uh, an appetizer. So the appetizer that I want to create is a um, vegan cheese ball. And cheese balls are really fantastic. These, um, uh, uh, multi, uh, these are good for all sorts of dining preferences. Um, omnivores love this. Uh, everyone I've ever made this for has thought it was absolutely delicious. So we, I'm all about making easy recipes. So I am making this with Kite Hill cream cheese and it's a um, non-dairy cream cheese made with almonds. And I uh, used to work for Kite Hill and I learned all sorts of delicious recipes um, while working with them. Uh, one thing you can also do that's really fun with the Kite Hill is just top, put this on a uh, serving tray and you can top it with a little bit of jalapeno jelly or apricot jam and it is absolutely incredible to serve with crackers. Super easy, you can even warm it up a little bit. But anyway, we start with our cream cheese and then we're going to add some dried cranberries. This is a really kind of uh, holiday festive, has a lot of holiday festive colors. And then we're also gonna add some herbs de Provence. And herbs of Provence have, has a bunch of herbs, but it also has a little bit of lavender in it too. So it has a really nice flavor profile. So we're gonna add, go with the herbs first. Hi there. I think we have someone new joining us. And we're just getting started. And Nicole should be putting the, if you don't have the recipes, they should be in the chat. So we're starting with our um, vegan cheese ball and I've just put our um, a non dairy cream cheese in it. And then I've added two teaspoons of herbs de Provence. And now I'm using a third of a cup of dried cranberries. And I mentioned that this recipe is really easy and that's why I love it. And it also tastes delicious too. So then I'm just going to mix these ingredients together. And this recipe, you really want to be careful because it's, it can be a touch, it can be a touch messy if you don't do it right. Um, we could also just, at, at this point, it's just a little bit of, of cream cheese mixed with the ingredients. We could put it back in the refrigerator to firm it up a little bit, just so it's a little bit easier to work with but I'm just gonna pop it on the plate and then I'm gonna show you how you make it into a cheese ball. And then I'm gonna add just a touch of salt. And all of these different, this combination of ingredients just really makes an absolutely delicious flavor pro profile. And like I mentioned, cheese balls are always a hit. You can make cheese balls with cashews, blended cashews. You can make them with, uh, I've even seen people make them with sunflower seeds. Um, any type of nut or seed makes a really nice cheese ball. And so then we just take this and you actually may, I should have tasted it first, but I'm sure it's okay. I put some enough salt in it, but you may want to taste it to see if it's salty enough for you. The Kite Hill is already pretty, the cream cheese is already pretty salty. So, so I put it on the plate 
And then with clean hands, we're going to cover the cheese ball with some sliced almonds. And I think the recipe calls for about a half a cup. And I have just enough for half of a cup. And hopefully I do. <laughs> and then like I said, with clean hands, we wanna try to form this into a ball. And if there are any, um, if there are any cheesy parts that may not have a lot of almonds on them, just kind of take the almonds and put them on top of it. And then do your best to, to form it into a ball. I didn't have quite enough almonds, but if you have plenty of almonds, then you can kind of round this up and it will make a really nice, perfectly formed cheese ball. And then what I love to do is serve the, this with a little bit of gluten-free crackers. These are simple meals. And most of these recipes that I'm preparing, I think all of these recipes that we're working on are gluten-free. I know uh, Nicole is gluten-free, so I'm always trying to come up with good recipes for her. But just cover the plate with the crackers. And you can make this ahead of time and just keep it in your refrigerator. and pull it out when people are ready to eat. And like I said, you when you make it, you would probably wanna add a few more um, almonds to it just to, make, to form it into a little bit better of a ball. But as you can see, super easy cheese ball, ready to eat and everybody loves this. So we're going to move on now to our main dish because I wanna get this put into the oven. So as I mentioned previously, um, I have found that my favorite main course is tofu. Um, I just love tofu. Uh, a lot of people, you know, try to use the like uh, packaged dinners, but my, I just love the protein tofu. You can do so much with it. And because it's so such a neutral flavor, it really absorbs all of the, um, any, any uh, ingredients that you um, put on top of it or cook, cook it with. So what we have here is I have cut up tofu in cutlets. I just sliced it down the middle. This is the way, or I, I sliced it, oh gosh. I just sliced it in little slabs, I guess I'll say. And um, this is the way I like to prepare it. You can also make little um, triangles out of it or you can make it into chunks. Question and then I marinated it in, in the oil, yes. Question for you, did you press the tofu before you cut it? You can press tofu. Um, it's not a requirement to press tofu, but what I like to do is at least get some of the water off of it. Um, it really is, it's just your preference. If you, tofu will absorb a lot more of the marinade if you press it. Um, I, don't, I don't always press mine, but I always like take a, a paper towel or wrap it in some sort of towel to pull off some of the moisture. So, Totally your call if you want it to absorb some of some more of those uh, more of the marinade ingredients you can some people are die hard tofu pressers but it's I don't sometimes I do it depends on what recipe really so anyway. Um, but probably the the main thing that you want to remember when you're cooking tofu is to marinate it in some in a, uh, some sort of marinade that you like. So I marinated the tofu cutlets and then I baked this for 10 minutes. And now I have, um, and this is all detailed in your handout. And now I have a really nice tahini marinade. And this is just gonna help develop the flavors. This just has a little bit of tahini and soy sauce, a little bit of garlic, and I think some water too. And I'm just gonna pour the marinade over. And I love garlic, especially this time of the year because garlic is so good at helping prevent colds and flus and sickness. And so I really try to eat a lot of garlic this time of year. I sneak garlic into almost everything that I cook. And especially if I feel like I'm getting sick, 
I tried to eat some raw garlic or put it, eat something with garlic in it. And some people probably think I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm just a huge fan of garlic and onions. So we're gonna pour the tahini marinade over the tofu. And then moving on, we have our crust. And we're just going to um, coat the um, tofu cutlets with a little bit of this. This is a walnut, um, coconut, cumin, salt, and herb crust. And I'm just gonna pour it on top of it and then just kind of uh, press it all in together. And this dish you can even make uh, early on and you could potentially even freeze it or you could definitely make it a couple days early and then just warm it up. And then just coat this really, really well and all of these flavors are just so nice together. And really there are a lot of options for making these cutlets. You can really just even crust them in a little bit of, uh, you can crust them in just some breadcrumbs, just marinate some tofu and then put some breadcrumbs and some herbs on top of them and then just cook them like that. I love to cook these also. I like the, they'll, they'll also get a little bit more crispy if you put them on a baking sheet with some, uh, parchment on top of it and it will crisp up quite a bit. But when it's cooked in just a regular pan like this, um, they, they're just really soft. They cook up nice and moist. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven. I think we cook this for 10 more minutes. Okay, and then let's see, I think I wanted to move on from there to the gravy. And this gravy is fantastic. Um, I tried a lot of gravies and I wanted to share this one because it is definitely by far my favorite. There's lots of onions and there's lots of, I cooked, I did a little bit of prep work and I chopped some onions and some mushrooms up. These are some locally grown mushrooms. And I chopped them up and I cooked, prepped them earlier. And now we're just gonna add the remaining ingredients and we'll let this simmer. So we've got our, I also, I think probably a lot of people know how to make a roux, but a roux is just made um, with flour and water. In this case, this recipe calls for water and oil, but you could just use, uh, I'm sorry, flour and oil, but you could just use flour and water if you're oil free. And this recipe is um, gluten free. So I decided one of my favorite gluten free flours to work with in general is brown rice flour. So any type of gluten-free flour will work, but I feel like brown rice really tastes the best. So when you're making the roux, just make sure that um, you whisk it together really well because this will help um, prevent any lumps in the gravy. So. Question here, Sarah. <clears throat> yes. What does the nutritional yeast do in this recipe for the gravy? Does it add like a cheesy flavor to it? Exactly. It will add a cheesy flavor and it will add, also add a really nice golden color. It's just, uh, so when you're do, cooking plant-based foods, you want to keep everything interesting and build a flavor profile. So that's why we add a lot of uh, herbs, spices, and, and things that create a lot of flavor, like the nutritional yeast, tahini builds a really good flavor too. So now I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable broth to our, I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable broth to our sauteed onions. And for anyone that doesn't know Mark Reinfeldt, he is um, based in Boulder. Really, really nice guy. And his classes are so much fun. If you haven't had a chance to take any of his classes, they are really fantastic. So I highly recommend them if you see any of them. Yeah, and so as um, Nicole mentioned, we're gonna add the nutritional yeast next. And as the name uh, 
demonstrates nutritional yeast is very good for you. I think probably everyone on this call knows that nutritional yeast is high in vitamin, uh, folic acid is also high in B vitamins too. And it gives recipes that cheesy flavor. And like I said, it helps develop that flavor profile. And then the next thing that we're gonna add is a little bit of soy sauce. And if vegan food really does rely on a lot of soy sauce, I have found. At least I use a ton of soy sauce. And I'm probably just gonna start with this one. I'm just gonna start with half of, I'm gonna just start with two tablespoons and then we'll see if we need more salt. But what we'll do is we will let this kind of cook for a while. We're just gonna let this simmer for a bit. I'm gonna let it simmer on low and then I'll come back to it while we're working on another recipe. I have a question for you. Um, yes. Because that's where I struggle often when I work gravies. <clears throat> so my go-to is usually Everroot or um, cornstarch, right? Yes. Um, when you do the brown rice flour, do you have to watch out how high you go with the temperature or how low? Because I've noticed with either the cornstarch or the arrowroot, one or the other, you know, you, you cook it up and it's nice and thick and then it cools down and it gets like really thin, Coffee. kind of thin and liquidy and vice versa sometimes. So it's like, while they're great starches to some extent for gravy, sometimes I'm like, eh, right? Yes not just like a normal flour when you go with a full, with a wheat flour. I read, I was reading somewhere that those starches, the arrowroot and the cornstarch are only good for certain applications. And I don't think it's, it's, they're good for gravy because I think you're right. That does happen. Like you get them to a certain point and then they, uh, a certain temperature and then they get liquidy. And I can't remember, I can't remember what they're better for, but I think probably a better application for gravy is more of the flours, like a gluten-free flour mix or the brown rice flour. Those would be my um, recommendations. I probably wouldn't use arrowroot or cornstarch personally, but I'd have to experiment a little bit more with them. Okay, and I'm gonna let that simmer, like I said, and then we'll add some herbs to that. And then I also included a recipe for cheesy mashed potatoes. And I just love adding nutritional yeast to mashed potatoes because it gives it a nice che cheesy flavor. And um, you can, obviously, you don't have to do that for um, the holidays, just add nutritional yeast to your, um, uh, mashed potatoes anytime you make them because it makes them, it just gives them such a nice flavor. I love it. I'm not going to prepare the mashed potatoes because I think everyone knows how to make mashed potatoes, but just keep it in mind. It's a really nice thing to add. And it just adds a little bit more uh, nutritional value too. So now what I want to do is move on to this gluten-free stuffing. And um, what we're going to use for this gluten-free stuffing is we're going to use so it's a, a kind of out of the ordinary um, stuffing. We're gonna use rice to cauliflower. And this actually turns out really, really nicely. And we're also, I'm also gonna be putting some sweet potato directly in the dressing. So you, it, you kind of um, uh, get, I can't say, I don't wanna say kill two birds with one stone, but you, um, you, you get more bang for your buck and you um, have the sweet potato and your, um, your uh, stuffing together, so. Question for you, um, in regards of the mashed potatoes, do you rice your potatoes for mashing them? I have never riced them myself. Okay. So, uh, but I, I don't know if anyone else on the call has any experience with that, but I'm sure I just mash them. That's probably my favorite thing to do. And then just add a lot of, um, I, I love to add a little, like quite a bit of vegan butter and then some non-dairy milk. Just make sure when you add your non-dairy milk that it's unsweetened. A lot of non-dairy milks have sugar in them. And I've made that mistake so, so, so many times coming home and realizing that there's, there's sugar in your non-dairy milk and it tastes absolutely terrible. 
I like it if it's in like a drink or something sweet, but not for mashed potatoes. It can yeah. be pretty awful. But so just always read the ingredients and make sure there's no sugar in your mashed potatoes. I've done that too. I honestly, I love adding, um, which is not very healthy, but follow your heart mayonnaise, like a few scoops oh. into the mashed potatoes. Oh, that sounds interesting. I love that, you know, for the sour cream. Yep. Kite Hill actually just came out with a sour cream that would be really good. Okay, and so now I just wanna just demonstrate a few quick cooking, uh, cutting skills. Um, when you uh, are cutting up a onion, um, I just, a couple quick techniques are, is to cut the onion in half and then peel back the skin. And I'm really not a big fan of cutting onions. I never have been a fan of cutting onions, but when you use this technique, it's really helpful. And whenever you're cutting, you always want to keep your fingers tucked under, make like a claw and always protect your fingers and always um, cut something on a flat, flat surface. Cut your produce to where it's flat and then make sure that you're always cutting something flat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice it horizontally, I believe this would be, in small strips and always try to keep things as stable as possible. Once you get to the end, it can be kind of challenging, but keep trying to keep that claw and keep your fingers tucked under and then come back and cut it like this. And it makes it a lot easier to cut, a lot safer, and it's a lot better. It keeps it keeps you from uh, making so much surface area that you that it makes you cry. And does anyone have any uh, tips for not for um, preventing themselves from crying? I know some people will use goggles. Some people try to get other people to cut onions for them. There's a lot of different techniques that people use. So anyway, I'm putting the um, onion into a skillet and you do wanna chop that onion probably as small as you can. And then for this recipe, I decided we're gonna do this oil-free. And um, anytime you're trying to do oil-free, Cooking, you want to either, uh, you, you want to do, you can do a healthy saute and you can either use a little bit of vegetable broth or you can also use a little bit of water. And you just um, swap the water or the vegetable broth out for oil in a recipe. And I actually prefer it because I feel like it preserves the quality of the vegetables, the flavor and the quality of the vegetables a little bit more. So, like I said, a lot of people are trying to do oil-free and it's actually perfectly easy if you want to roast vegetables in vegetable broth, in vegetable broth instead of oil. Um, it's a really good swap. And so the next thing I'm gonna let our, uh, I'm gonna let our onions cook a little bit. And while our onions are cooking, I'm gonna chop up some sweet potato. And then I already have some carrots and some celery cut, cut up. And I love sweet potato this time of year. I taught a budget friendly cooking class the other day. And we used re uh, sweet potato in a lot of our recipes. Um, a sweet potato is so good for you in so many ways. It has um, all sorts of, of vitamin C and a lot of other really good uh, phytonutrients, but it's also a very budget friendly um, a vegetable to use. So I just wanted to demonstrate cutting a sweet potato while our onions are cooking. And when I, I had chopped up the celery and the onions previously, and then whenever I am prepping, pre-prepping stuff, I I like to store it in water. I store vegetables in water quite often because it keeps it from keeps it from spoiling or drying out. And whenever you have vegetables or even fruits that might be kind of past their prime or have kind of dehydrated, 
You can sometimes soak them in a little bit of uh, ice water and it will help fluff them up and hydrate them a little bit, so. Okay, and we're going to use the whole sweet potato in this recipe. And with this recipe, you could also, instead of sweet potato, you could all, or in addition, you can add some mushrooms. I've also had this uh, uh, recipe with tempeh if you want a little bit more protein. You could also swap out some butternut squash. Any type of squash would be really nice in here too. So I have, um, I'm using the flat part and I'm always being really mindful of my cutting techniques so I don't let anything slip and accidentally cut myself. You also wanna have a pretty sharp knife. The knife I'm using is not the greatest, but. And then for this recipe, I'm gonna dice these up pretty small. And with this fried, uh, this dish, it's very similar to fried rice. And I've seen a lot of people substituting, substituting this rice cauliflower. You can rice this cauliflower on your own if you have a, uh, a food processor. But anytime, I really like buying pre-packaged vegetables just because I'm always busy. And anytime that I can um, find some uh, quick strategies. I really like to buy pre-prepped ingredients. It's a little bit more expensive, but um, it's nice to do. And especially with the rice cauliflower, because it really can be kind of a chore to rice cauliflower. And you can also chop it up really fine, chop up the cauliflower really fine, but that kind of is tedious and takes forever. So I'm just gonna cut these in a few more smaller pieces. And these are gonna cook pretty quickly, so I do want to have them pretty small. And like I said, sweet potatoes just add such a nice flavor to things. I love cooking with sweet potatoes. I cook a lot of meals with sweet potatoes. And so I'm gonna add the sweet potato and then I have one stalk of celery and I chopped it pretty small. And then I have some carrot too. And then just be pretty mindful not to let it burn. And this looks absolutely beautiful. And then I'm gonna turn down the heat. And I think that's probably enough sweet potato. I might just chop a little bit more. Um, and then I'm also, let me peek at the tofu. I'm gonna let the tofu cook just a little bit longer, but that looks really, really good. And it smells delicious too. And then after this recipe, I'm gonna um, do our raw cranberry sauce. And then we'll plate everything and then we'll do our pumpkin pie, pie parfaits. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cook down. It's on medium heat. And I'm also going to add a half cup of vegetable broth. 
and you can make your own vegetable broth or you can also just add um you could also just add more water but i like to add vegetable broth or um there is even a when i was working on this recipe there is a a chicken the bouillon it's a no it's like a, a vegan bouillon and it has like a chicken flavor to it and it gives obviously everything that you make a chicken flavor it's really good in like chicken noodle soup um and it's also really good um in any sort of uh dish that you're trying to make tastes like turkey or chicken or so add just a little bit of my vegetable broth and then we're going to move on to the raw cranberry sauce. So Sarah, who are you going to have over for dinner tonight to eat? All I know I'm going to have to, way too much food. Anyone can, you, anyone can come on over. I have tons of food. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to check on my check on my uh, gravy. Oh, I just love this gravy. I am, I am such a huge fan of mushrooms. I've always loved mushrooms from when I was a kid. If you don't love mushrooms, you can just do a gravy with onions, or you could just do a gravy with um, no vegetables in it too, and just use these ingredients and um, just like maybe add a little bit of garlic or something like that, and just let these ingredients simmer and then add a little bit of the uh, brown rice flour and, and the roux, and it would make just a really nice gravy too. So turn the gravy way down, that's getting pretty close. And my, I'm gonna turn my tofu off and just let it warm in there. I've got my dressing cooking and I got that on low. And now we're gonna move to the cranberry sauce. Let me clean this up just a touch for everyone. And at the end, we're going to add some, we're going to add some herbs to everything. So this, I think almost everyone on this call knows what a food processor is, but I have a Cuisinart and I love my food processor. I also love my uh, Vitamix and um, highly recommend. They're a little bit more pricey, but um, I saved up money and I bought my Vitamix and my Vitamix has lasted forever. It's such a wonderful tool for plant-based cooking. It's great for to make soups. It's great to make dressings. It's just such a fantastic thing to have. And same with this food processor. I use my Vitamix quite a bit more for smoothies and just things throughout the week. Um, and what I do want to just uh, talk a little bit about is um, cranberries. These are fresh cranberries. And I don't know if anyone has made cranberry sauce um, from scratch, but cranberry sauce I've learned recently that cranberry sauce is loaded with sugar. Cranberry sauce has like a cup of sugar in it, um, a traditional cranberry sauce. So what we're doing with this cranberry sauce is instead of uh, using um, a bunch of sugar, we're using dates. And dates are the healthiest way to sweeten things. Um, you can make date paste or you can also use date syrup. I recently found this date syrup and it is absolutely fantastic. I got this at uh, Natural Grocers and I highly recommend it. And um, it's probably one of the only recommended ways to sw sweeten things. Dr. Greger recommends using dates. They're a whole food plant-based ingredient and they actually taste really fantastic. You don't wanna go overboard, but they're a really, really nice way to sweeten things if you're trying to get off of sugar and move to more healthy sugars. So. Anyway, and also with cranberries, um, cranberries are, don't wait to eat cranberries until Thanksgiving, until the holidays. Cranberries are a fantastic food to have. They're a fantastic fall food to have. And they're high in vitamin C and they taste just fantastic. You can make, um, you can make desserts out of them and you can also um, cook them down and have different sauces. You can also put them on um, salads and things like that too. So 
Eat cranberries all fall long, and they're also a pretty uh, nice budget-friendly food. Most people just eat, eat them around the holidays, but eat them more often. They are, um, they're a really nice food to have. And then I've got my raw cranberries, and then I've got a, a cup of dates. And I, like I said, that uh, cup of dates is going to add the really nice um, natural sweetness to this recipe. And then the next thing that we're going to add for a little bit of sweetness is some apples. And like I mentioned, we're using the food processor for this dish, but you could also, you could also cook this down or you could cut these up pretty small yourself if you don't have a food processor. Um, you could cut all of these ingredients down and just mix them together or you could cook them down if you want something that's a more warm dish. This dish is also really good with pears and you can, or you can even blend up some um, orange oranges as well. And so I just have some basic apples and I love eating apples. I love, I've been making stewed apples in the morning a lot recently with some nice um, spices. And we'll cut up one more apple real quick. And you just wanna cut it into chunks. And I have been making this raw cranberry sauce for years and I just love it. And it's also just a really nice snack to have around the house. And you can even eat it for breakfast too. And like I said, if you prefer a warm cranberry sauce, you can cook this down and you can add really any ingredients that you want. Check on my, check on my stuffing. And this is cooking down really nicely. And this just tastes so good. Like I said, with the, uh, with the sweet potato, it's a really nice combination of flavors. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of orange juice. And I like to fresh squeeze my oranges. And then I'm gonna pulse this in the food processor for about 30 seconds. And if you want this to be a little bit more cranberry flavored, you could probably leave out some of the apples and use more cranberries. And you could probably also leave out some of the dates too. It might be nice with a few more cranberries, but it doesn't need to pulse very long. We'll give it one more pass through. And I think that's perfect. And I'll show you guys real quick and then we're gonna plate all of this up and you can get a good view of what everything looks like. But anyways, that's just a really healthy, whole foods, plant-based, delicious cranberry sauce, uh, naturally sweetened with dates, very, very healthy and excellent to eat for holiday meals and also excellent just to have as leftovers. And also when, the, during the holidays, I also wanted to mention that the holidays can be really health, unhealthy for folks that are trying to be a little bit more mindful of what we consume. We move from uh, Halloween, which we're always pushed candy and you know all sorts of junk food at Halloween. And then we move into Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving can be incredibly um, full, lots of, tons of calories in a, a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and then we move to uh, Christmas, which is cookie season. And so it can be a really, really stressful time for people that are trying to be more mindful about what they're eating. Um, so probably one of my best suggestions 
when you're trying to be a little bit more mindful about your diet is pre-planning if you are going over to anyone's house um, that may not uh, be on board with eating healthy, um, either eat, eat prior to going or if you're going to any sort of work, uh, work party, um, eat prior or bring healthy foods that you know um, you'll enjoy and you won't be tempted by some of the other sweets and all the other things that people bring. I mean, sweets in small quantities are, are good, but um, the amount that we eat them over the holidays is just a little bit, a little bit much. So anyway, I'm pulling out our tofu cutlets and then I'm going to add our roux to the golden gravy. And like I said, that roux just makes your flour um, really smooth. You always, if you're ever making a gravy, be sure to make a roux because I've made the mistake and tried to throw flour in gravy and then it just gets all lumpy and chunky and it's just not pleasant at all. So I'm gonna let that simmer a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, vegetable broth to our gravy. And then just let that simmer. And I'm really looking forward. It's been a while since I've made that gravy and it's so good with all those mushrooms and onions in it and other, um, other flavors too. And then, so I showed you this earlier, but these, uh, the sweet potatoes have all cooked down. And the great thing about this dish is it's oil-free and it's super flavorful too. And you can add really anything that you want to this. And then we're gonna just add our full bag of riced, uh, riced cauliflower. You can rice the cauliflower on your own, but I prefer just, uh, prefer just buying pre-packaged pre -packaged, um, vegetables when I can, when it makes sense. I even use this, I even use this riced cauliflower in stir fries throughout the, throughout the winter. It's really good in a nice stir fry, like a uh, fried rice, I should say. And then I'm just going to add it directly in here to the skillet. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit and then just let this cook. The cauliflower doesn't require too long to cook. It'll cook down in about five minutes. And then I'll add a little bit more vegetable broth to this. And then the final thing that we're going to do is add some herbs. So I think I might just move right over into the pumpkin parfaits while the rest of this stuff is cooking. Oh, and I did want to mention, we if you are local to Denver, we have several um, new businesses that are growing mu mushrooms. And I got these mushrooms from this business called Fox fungi, and they're actually going to be at our pop-up market on December 4th. And um, you can, there's all sorts of um, other vendors that are, are growing uh, mushrooms as well, and even some up by you, Nicole. And I don't know if you guys like mushrooms, but I love these homegrown mushrooms, and just getting a diversity of mushrooms is so good for you. Uh, mushrooms provide so many um, uh, disease protection, and they're just also such a nice substitute for um, in, in vegan cooking for meat. Okay, does anyone have any questions before I move on to the pumpkin parfaits? Okay. And these parfaits are probably my favorite part of the meal. And the reason I like these parfaits is like I mentioned earlier, they are a um, little health healthier than a traditional pie. Um, so what I did previously, I didn't want to prepare this while we were working, so I prepped it. And all this is is just a little bit, it's basically pumpkin pie filling, 
but I've used coconut milk. Um, you could use coconut cream. In the recipe, I realized I called out coconut cream, but you could use coconut milk. Coconut milk works just fine. A canned coconut milk is just fine. I think everyone has seen coconut milk, but just a canned coconut milk, you find this in the, um, you find this in the uh, uh, Asian section. You don't want um, coconut milk in a, you don't want this kind of coconut milk, or you don't want this kind of milk. You want the canned coconut milk because it will have a little bit more fat. So all I did was I blended a can of pumpkin, uh, straight pumpkin, and then I blend, uh, added the coconut milk, milk, a little bit of uh, pumpkin pie spice, and I actually added some of the date paste or the date syrup as well. And if you don't have a Vitamix, you can also just mix this by hand and it works just the same. And so what we're gonna do, these are the these are parfaits. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to make uh, little layered, little layered dishes, little layered desserts. And what you wanna use is um, any sort of, any sort of clear glass. If you wanted to be really fancy, you could do like a wine glass or a champagne flute. Um, but I'm just going to use these regular glasses. Okay, everything's getting really close. The only bad thing is that this is a little bit challenging to get everything in uh, without, without making a bit of a mess. But um, once you do it a few times, it's a lot easier. And then I just went and bought some regular coconut whip. And you can find this pretty um, readily at any grocery store now. I think King Supers has it. Um, Safeway likely has it. I got this at Sprouts, but I know it's at Natural Grocers too. And this isn't incredibly healthy, but um, the other thing you can do, this is actually just good to eat on its own or just make a pumpkin pie uh, filling or like a pumpkin pudding is really delicious too, if you're really, really wanting to eat super healthy and just not even add the whipped cream. I like a little bit of whipped cream um, just because it really makes the dish fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is start out by adding a layer of pumpkin filling at the bottom. and a little bit more. And you can do the layers as thin or as thick as you like. And then you are going to want to let the whipped cream kind of um, soften a bit. And then just add a layer and poke it down as much as you can. Hopefully this is easy for folks. And like I said, once you do it a couple of times, it becomes a lot easier. But this is a pretty, pretty easy recipe that for people that may not have, want to cook a lot or have a ton of skills cooking. But you do wanna be certain that your ingredients are somewhat cool or else it will melt, it will melt your whipped cream. And then just keep flip, oops, actually, I probably should have, we'll do a small layer. I like to put a layer of granola, just so it has a little bit of crunchiness and a little bit of texture. So a quick layer of granola, and you can also add some um, graham cracker crumbs, or you could add a, any type of, nuts, you could use some candied nuts or some pumpkin, uh, candy pumpkin seeds would be really nice. That would be fantastic. Um, yeah, any, any type of seed would be really good. But I like this gluten-free granola. And I'm just gonna do a quick layer of that. If you do use granola, you wanna kind of break it up a little bit. And just do a kind of a thin layer of that. And then we'll do another layer of the filling.
And if it gets on the sides, that's not, not the end of the world. And just one last layer of whipped cream. And like I said, you could do as thin layers, as many layers as you like. You can do super thin layers, or you can do more thick layers like this. Little bit more. And then we're gonna top it. We're gonna top it with a little bit more granola. Or like I said, I, I would love to have some um, ground graham crackers with this. But you definitely want to have that texture because it's it's just nice to have it in addition. But you could leave it off too. So There you go, and a nice, pretty healthy, <laughs> a nice, pretty healthy um, whole foods, plant-based uh, dessert. So I think the rest of our stuff is done. Oh, I do wanna add a couple herbs, and I wanted to show you guys a quick technique for chopping your herbs. Yeah, this, um, this stuffing is starting to turn out really nice, and it's so pretty. So just cook it a little bit longer. I'm gonna add a couple herbs. I'm gonna add just a little bit more stock or broth to this. And I think we want to add, you probably wanna add um, salt and pepper. You wanna taste this at the end just to see if it's salted to your liking. And then we're gonna add some herbs. And then we've also got our gravy pretty much done. I'm gonna turn up the heat so the gravy makes a little bit more, a little bit more gravy like. While I'm chopping the herbs, we'll just do one final cook on these. And then we'll plate everything up. To put the cheese ball. I should have put the cheese ball back in the refrigerator. You do, you can put the cheese ball in the refrigerator so it hardens up a bit, and then you can add more. Uh, you can add more almonds to the outside and just make it a little bit firmer. Let me get all of my tools out to plate things up. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show everyone is how I like to chop herbs. And I think probably several of you have sat in on these classes before, but I just learned this technique a few years ago and it is, uh, it's just such, it's a game changer for me. I hate to chop herbs because they always just turn into this mush. So what I do instead is I use kitchen night, uh, kitchen, scissors and I just chop them up real fine in a little uh, cup or you can also do this in a larger bowl or a mug or whatever but you can really get them chopped up without them turning to mush this way so just chop and chop and chop until you re uh, reach your desired fineness okay and then we're just gonna add a little bit of parsley to both of those, to both those last dishes. Just wanna see how much they call for. Oops. We're gonna add to the stuffing, I'm gonna add a little bit of parsley and a little bit of sage and thyme. And to the, I think to the, uh, gravy, I add a little bit of parsley too. So I'm gonna do about two tablespoons of parsley to the gravy and about the same. We'll just put it all in 
with the dressing. And then I have a little bit of sage and a little bit of thyme. I like to get fresh herbs when I can. And I also have a little bit of rosemary. Rosemary might be really good. I like to use a lot of uh, uh, fresh herbs because fresh herbs, especially sage and rosemary are so good for your brain. Um, my, I have a dad that's struggling with some memory issues and I'm always trying to get him to eat lots of fresh herbs. And then we'll just do those, give those a quick chop, just kind of strip the thyme off the stock. And then we'll give that a quick chop and we'll add it to the, add it to the gravy and the dressing. I need to get some new, the, if you, you want to have um, a little bit more sharp scissors than I have, it would, that would be a little bit more helpful, but. Anyway, I just love chopping my herbs this way. Okay, so we're in our final cook. I'm just gonna add just a light handful to both. Oh, and that gravy looks perfect. So probably pull that off. And I think that brown rice flour really helped it it, that's a, just a really nice recipe and that brown rice flour just cooks up so perfectly. And with these, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in it, but at this stage I would definitely be certain to taste everything and then add some salt and pepper. Oops, that might be a little bit too much. I'll add just a little bit to the gravy. I think the gravy is pretty good. And I like to use fresh cracked pepper. But yeah, the, uh, the herbs in this are really gonna help develop that flavor profile. And then the salt at the last will just really accentuate all of those flavors. And you have some really great flavors with the um, sweet potato and the carrots and the onions too. So that stuffing is just a, just a really nice mix of ingredients. So let's plate everything up and then I'm going to eat. Um, let's see, and so we have the cooked, uh, the cooked cutlets, the walnut crust crusted cutlets. And like I said, if you wanna do, um, you can do any sort of topping for this, you can do breadcrumbs, um, you can do any other types of uh, nuts or seeds, um, but I really like the walnuts, pecans are really good too. And definitely probably the best, the thing that makes this dish the best is just that tahini and just building that flavor profile. And like I said, when you're cooking plant-based stuff, you just really wanna keep it as intriguing as possible. So we have our little tofu cutlets. And if you want, you can also crisp that up and maybe put it on a um, cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and it'll get a lot crisper. But then we have our final gluten-free stuffing. And ideally we would also have some um, mashed potatoes, but like I said, I think everyone knows how to cook mashed potatoes. So I didn't really want to do that today. But like I said, add, adding um, nutritional yeast to your mashed potatoes is so good. And like, I, like uh, Nicole said, also add some sour cream or some mayonnaise too. That sounds really good. Sarah, do you think the cutlets could be done in an air fryer as well? Oh, actually they could. That would be a great idea. It would get them really crispy. And then we have the beautiful gravy. And this is great if you are like me and love mushrooms, but if you don't love mushrooms or onions, you could just leave it out. You could just leave out either of those and just follow the recipe and just leave the, leave the vegetables out. And this is just, with the addition of the nutritional yeast, it's just a really, really nice, really nice 
uh, flavor combination. So if I had some mashed potatoes, obviously I would add the gravy to the mashed potatoes, but I'm just gonna put it over the cutlet and it is so, so delicious. And this gravy is good for so many other recipes too. Um, shepherd's pie, it would be really good on a shepherd's pie. And also this dish is not just, I mean, none of the, this stuff is just solely for Thanksgiving. This dish can be made, uh, I think when I made it in his class, in Mark's class, he made a really delicious coconut spinach rice dish. And then we put it on top of the rice. And then we put the gravy on top of the rice and it was phenomenal. It was just out of this world. It, his cooking is so good. Um, so anyway, these are some of my favorite healthy recipes. I hope that these help you stay on track with your, um, in your mission of eating healthier. And I hope that um, you can go through the holidays a little bit less stress-free. Just when you also really, I'm such a huge fan of pre-planning. I'm such a huge fan of being prepared for things and doing things easily. Um, actually for, for this year, I ordered a, a couple pre-packaged dinners and um, those are, I ordered them from a local restaurant. And so I'm getting some stuffing from them and I'm also getting um, some mac and cheese. So try to save time whenever you can and just pre-plan and it helps to make things a lot easier. So um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. And I hope you guys enjoyed some of these, enjoy some of these recipes. They are some of my favorites and I think you'll enjoy them too. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Yeah, thank you everybody. Um, here are your idea, ideas for Thanksgiving um you know try it i know i'm like i might have some cutlets for dinner tonight because <laughs> now i'm really hungry and it seems like very easy and quick so thanks for joining um thank you sarah for your time and doing all the food preps and you know we hope to see you soon enjoy your weekend enjoy your thanksgiving and yeah thank you so much for supporting the good life of you we really appreciate you yes Thank you all. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.